And let's get into the discussion. Today we have an exclusive with the communications officer of the opposition NDC. Sami Jemfi is here. He's also um, a legal practitioner. Thank you for uh, joining me. Thanks for having me, Rola. Mm. And uh, I see that there are a lot of um, activities being undertaken, especially by the party. Recently, uh, the chair did address um, the uh, country, or if not the ordinary Ghanaian, uh, based on a version of how the NDC sees the state of the nation. But categorically, how has that resonated uh, with people based on your observation so far? Well, so far, so good. The feedback uh, we've had from across the world is very positive. People have been enlightened. People are now well informed and equipped with accurate information about the true state of affairs in Ghana. Uh, even though the state of Ghana is the daily experience by the citizenry, uh, not many are aware of the state of the various sectors of the nation. And so when President Nanadu Dankwe Kufuado on the 8th of March 2023, peddled um, um, many falsehoods in his so-called address on the state of the nation to parliament, many were confused. And that is why we, as a responsible opposition party, were duty bound to set the record straight and present the true state of our nation. Because you see, until you accurately diagnose a disease, any medication <laughs> you give um, 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 the sick will be in vain. And we believe that it is important as a nation for us to, first of all, appreciate where we are, how we got here, which is very important, and more importantly, how we can come out of the economic mess we have been plunged into. The true state of our nation, um, um, unfortunately, Roland, as our national chairman presented two days ago, is one of a nation in bankruptcy. One of a nation in tatters. Everything is currently in disarray. Nothing is working in Ghana today. And the reason is simple. The reason is that six years ago, we elected for ourselves a group of people who have proven to be the biggest scam ever perpetrated against Ghanaians. A group of people who have no love for country and who only came into office to enrich themselves and have destroyed our beloved country in the process. That is a sad reality we are confronted with on a daily basis as Ghanaians. You would recall that candidate Ekufuado and his vice Alhaji Baumia rode on the back of many, many mud watering promises into office. These were the group of people who promised to transform Ghana in a matter of 18 months, 18 months, if they were to be elected. They promised to create jobs for the teeming unemployed youth of this country. They promised that they were so going to develop this country if they were given a chance, that in 18 months, no community or village was going to have a water or a sanitation problem. They promised us one district, one factory, one village, one dam, and one million dollars for every constituency every year. These and many mouth-watering promises they gave Ghanaians led some Ghanaians to vote for them in 2016 and maybe in 2020. But what do we see? After being the most luckiest and the most resourced government in our history, after having in excess of 820 billion Ghana cities in total revenue, more revenue than all governments from Nkrumah to President Mohammed Tenwa put together, 
they have succeeded in collapsing the Ghanaian economy. They have succeeded in completely destroying the Ghana economy. And they have very, very little to show for all the unprecedented resources they have had. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to share with you some of the indices, some of the facts our national chairman presented to the nation in his address so that every objective mind watching us this morning can appreciate the truth for his or herself. Just 48 hours after that press conference, indeed 24 to 48 hours, the Gafflin MPP uh, and its leaders, uh, communicating general secretary, described your position of the state of the nation as propaganda laced address, a blatant bunch of falsehoods, unsubstantiated allegations, unprovoked attacks on a government that they say is working so hard. You've seen one district, one factory, implementation of a free SHS policy. Okay, well, we will talk about that in due course, but um, I believe that as we discuss the true state of the nation address delivered by our national chairman, it will be very evident to the very discerning minds watching us this morning what the state of our country is. Um, for example, look at our public debt as we speak, which is actually the bane of our country today. The main reason why we are experiencing the excruciating hardships we are, we are currently going through. When this government was elected in 2017, Roland, they took over a nation with a public debt stock of 120 billion Ghana cities. Our entire debt as a nation, from the days of Osajefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah in 1957 to 2016, if you take out the debt we're forgiven when we joined HEPIC, okay, stood at 120 billion. These guys who are in government today lambasted the previous Mahama administration for this. They said, why should government Ghana, a small country like Ghana, have a huge public debt of 120 billion? The President Mahama was borrowing too much. He was borrowing recklessly. That is why at page 13 of their 2016 manifesto, they promised to reduce the rate of borrowing. But what are the facts today? The facts show, incontrovertible facts, show that our public debt has ballooned from 120 billion in 2016 to over 600 billion Ghana cities as we speak. Over 600 billion. So do the subtraction and see what they have added to the public, public debt stock. Over 480 billion in a matter of almost seven years. These are the people who promised to reduce the rate of borrowing. You know. Today, if you look at our debt to GDP ratio, which is a measure of the sustainability of the debt of every country, our debt to GDP ratio has increased from 56% in 2016 under President Mahama to now 103%. And 3%. You know what that means? What that means is that if we monetize our entire GDP, or in other words, if we collect the incomes of all Ghanaians, incomes generated in this economy by all Ghanaians, the cocoa seller, the hairdresser, the barber, the trader, the teacher, the nurse, the bank manager, the businessman, we collect all their incomes and we put it together, it will still not be enough to pay for our debt. That is how bankrupt we are today. We are so bankrupt that today, if you divide our total public debt stock of, of over 600 billion by our population, every Ghanaian, including you, Roland, including children, owe over 20,000 Ghana cities, 200 million old Ghana cities. Today, we have been swallowed by our unsustainable debt as a nation. That we have, such that we have officially defaulted on our debt obligations. You know that. We have defaulted. 
we are, we, we are not in any position to service our debts anymore. We've told our bilateral partners, countries who have lent us money, that we can't pay them. This is the first time in the last 50 year history of this country that we are hearing of something like this. Even what happened last 50 years under uh, Kutu Echampo's regime was not exactly what is happening today. That was a debt repudiation, yen tuya, policy. This one is yen to me, This is default. We simply don't have the means to pay. I don't know whether you listen and, and, to the and, NPP and, and, because and, what they do say is that for all the arguments that the NDC makes, there are glaring projects, initiatives that the ordinary Ghanaian has had a feel of. Okay. For which this quantum of borrowing or debt has been used for. Oh, sure. What's your response to that? The president in his State of the uh, Nation address alleged that they have used a large chunk. In fact, that is exactly what he said. A large chunk of their borrowed funds on the roads. But our national chairman has demonstrated in his presentation on the true state of our nation that that claim is palpable falsehood. Because as I have already told you, in the last six and a half years, this government has had in excess of 820 billion in total revenue. Yet if you check their budgets, their own budget statements presented to parliament from 2017 to 2022, and you add all the expenditure outends on rules, they are spent just about 10.6 billion cities on rules, which constitutes only 1.6%, a paltry 1.6% of total revenue. So if you have spent a, a, a paltry 1.6% of all the monies you have had on rules, then you cannot tell us that you have invested your borrowed funds into infrastructure or road projects. In fact, if you want to take infrastructure as a whole, the construction of schools, hospitals, and developmental projects. The figures show that this government has spent only 6.5 of the total resource envelope that has accrued to them in the last six and a half years on infrastructure. In other words, about 93% of the total resource envelope they have had in the last six and a half years has been wasted on corruption, waste, totally wasted on consumption. Roland, in any case, in any case, if they have invested on infrastructure, can they show us one district hospital they have constructed anywhere in this country, constructed and completed, operationalized in anywhere in this country? After getting 820 billion, this is not small money. President Mahama did not get half of this amount in the four years that he was in office. Yet look at what he did with the little he got. Today we can boast of the best airport in the whole of West Africa, Terminal 3. That processes over 2 million passengers a year and generates a lot of revenue for the Ghana Airport Company. Such that the loan which was procured by the Ghana Airport Company on the strength of their own books under the leadership of the visionary nation builder John Mahama, today is being paid for from that investment. We borrowed for investments. We didn't borrow for chop chop. Look at that 12 gas processing plant. A $1 billion first of its kind gas processing plant in Ghana that saves this country over $300 million a year. Today, the $1 billion facility we took from China under the CDB facility is being paid for by that project. That is what visionary leaders do. Look at the many secondary schools we borrowed, I mean, we built under the Mahama regime, the community day senior high schools. Look at the hospitals, even in Accra here. I can point you to the only quaternary hospital in Ghana, the University of Ghana Medical Center, 612 bed, built by President Mahama. Do you know the jobs that has created? Look at the rich hospital, few meters from here. Is that 420 bed Ridge Hospital? Do you know the jobs it has created for health workers? Go to Dodoa and look at the Ultramodern Hospital we gave them. Look at the Bank of Ghana Hospital. Look at the 
Ghana Maritime Authority Hospital and other institutional hospitals like the uh, uh, police uh, teaching hospital. Look at the other regions, Upper West, Upper East. Look at the many developmental projects we gave them that created jobs and prosperity for the people with the little we had. Can you imagine if President Mahama, the nation builder, had had in excess of 820 billion as president? These people have had this amount of money and they can't show you the hospitals they have built. You haven't heard the announcement about Agenda 111, oh, a I, number of initiatives that have even though some of we them. We heard the announcement, have... but it was only an announcement. Some of them are under construction. My brother, the promise, first of all, was that this government was going to construct 88 hospitals in one year. That was the promise they gave us in 2020. One year came and not a foundation had been dug for even one of these hospitals. Then the president amended the promise to Agenda 111 and said he would deliver 111 hospitals in another one year. It's been more than two years now and not one of these hospitals has been completed. And now they have even extended the duration period to 2024. The last time we tore some of the sites, the, some of the sites had been overgrown with weeds. Contractors have abandoned sites. So what are we talking about here? Are we supposed to celebrate slogans? Governance is not about empty rhetoric, lofty rhetoric, empty talk. When it comes to cheap sloganeering, we give it to them. They are experts in that. But when it comes to actual deliverables, investing the meager resources of states into the productive sectors of the economy to create jobs, they are always found wanting. Sami, mean, are you look, doubting look, that Roland, some of these projects are being undertaken? It's not about they being undertaken. The promise was to complete the projects within one year. Mm. <laughs> what is the state of that? Now, it is not propaganda and it is not false that our public debt is no longer sustainable. In fact, it's a no-brainer. Everybody knows that now. The government has publi publicly accepted that now. And I say to them that if you have not spent and borrowed recklessly, you would have been able to service your debt. Like His Excellency Jerry John Rollins of blessed memory, Professor Atta Mills, and even President Kofu of the MPP stock were able to service the debts of this country under their tenure. How come that only you only you, Alaji Bawumia, you have defaulted on your debt repayments. It means you have been reckless. It means you have been inept. You have been totally wasteful. That is what that means. Today, Ghana's economy, which used to be rated as a B minus economy, a stable economy in 2016, today is rated as RD. Do you know the meaning of RD? That is an economy which is below junk status. An economy which is below a baller economy status. That is why today Ghana can no longer go on the euro bond market to borrow money. That is how they have collapsed this country's economy. Today, the rate of inflation, which in 2016 stood at 15.4%, and they insulted us, called us names, said we're wicked, and so on and so forth. And promised to reduce, in fact, they promised single digit inflation. Today, Ghana, for the first time in the last 40 years, is experiencing hyperinflation of 52%. And you know that the inflation rate, which is the measure of the average increase in prices on the market we're experiencing in Ghana today is the third highest in the whole of Africa. It is the highest in the whole of West Africa and the third highest in the whole of Africa. So, I mean, while that is the situation, mm -hmm. there is a communication and a concern that has been raised by the president. Indeed, in the recent State of the Nation address, that the NDC and other critics of government seem to fail to recognize that before 2020, the economy was recording some nice growth figures. And that we've had the current state being attributed to some exogenous factors, well, especially COVID that plagued the whole of the world. And from February last year, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, that cannot go unnoticed. Do you believe that? 
Am I supposed to answer that? I'm asking you a question. Oh, we're having a conversation. Do you believe that? Because I would be surprised if you believe that. You see, you must understand that President Ekufuado is a very dishonest person. He can't simply speak the truth. He's innately dishonest. If you doubt me, go and listen to the kind of things he and his vice said in opposition and what they are serving the people of this country with today. Or even look at the things he told us when this economic crisis began and check whether he has fulfilled them. Was he not the person who told us that we will never go to the IMF and that we are a proud nation, we will never go to the IMF? Was that not a scam? Was he not the same person who told bondholders, persons who have lent their lifetime savings to government, that, oh, we are going to do a debt exchange program, but there will be no hackers. Have you forgotten? Was that not a scam? Today, what, what are we seeing? Haven't we seen for the first time in the history of this country pensioners who are supposed to be enjoying their retirement in peace, holding walking sticks, and demonstrating under the mercy of the sun for days at the office of the finance ministry? Since when did you see such despicable, heart-wrenching images on our sets like we saw a few weeks ago? Was it not this same President Kufuad who told us that, that we don't know how to save, uh, bring the dead to life, but we know how to revive a dead economy? Is this how to revive a dead economy? The leadership we are being served with, the utter, reckless, and useless leadership we are being served with today, is that how to revive a dead economy? Is this, is it, are they not the people who said they, are, they had abolished road tools so that Ghanaians could accept the e levy? Was that not a scam? Is it not the same person who said they will, they will convert toll boots into ultra-modern toilet facilities for the people of this country? Was that not a scam? And you believe these people. These are a group of people who are allergic to the truth. Look, what does the facts show about our pre-COVID economy as a nation? And I think that you our friends in the media, you who are the fourth state of the realm, owes a duty to this nation to educate the nation, to educate the people. What was our public debt before COVID struck us? The public debt was billion. $225 billion. As at March 2020, check, $225 billion. Anybody watching me can Google it. It had increased from $120 billion to $225 billion, meaning that even before COVID, this government had added 105 billion to the public debt stock. Our debt to GDP had increased from 56% in 2016, as I, I have already told you, to close to 70% in 2019, if you added the ESLA, Dache, and other hidden debts of government. That is why the World Bank's country director, Mr. Pierre Laporte, is on record to have said that Ghana's economy showed serious signs of challenges even before COVID struck. Ah, Roland, have you forgotten that in 2019, even before we recorded our first two cases of uh, uh, COVID in March 2020, the city had so depreciated against the dollar, the euro, the pound, and all the major international currencies, such that the government constituted a 14 member 4040 member committee to investigate the reasons for the alarming depreciation of the city. Was that not before COVID? Was that not before the Russian Ukraine war? That is the fact. Before COVID, the government was already spending recklessly. If you want to know that they were spending recklessly, look at their budget deficit figures. Because the budget deficit is the difference between government's revenue, the revenue the government gets, and its expenditure. And according to this government, if that, the difference between government's, the nation's revenue and its expenditure exceeds 5% of GDP, then it means that the government is reckless. Yet we know that in 2018, we recorded a deficit of 
2018, 7.8%, and in 2019, a deficit of 7.5%, far above the legally acceptable threshold of 5%, which means that before COVID, the government was already spending recklessly. Before COVID, what was the, what, what could this government show for the borrowings they had engaged in? Had they built any, had they made any investments? You hadn't seen one district, one factory, <laughs> one constituency, one, one district, one dollars. factory is not financed with borrowed funds. And then also, but one, one district, one factory, one, 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 the free SHS that's on, being undertaken. On. Free SHS is not financed with borrowed funds. It is financed with oil money. And the free SHS has collapsed. As we speak now, there is no free SHS. Because the cost of secondary education in Ghana today is more expensive than it was in 2016. Go and check the prospectus of the various secondary schools. For some institutions, they have over 50 items on their prospectus. And students are supposed to pay for all these things. When we were told that under the free SHS policy, all a child needed to do was to wear his or her uniform and just walk to school. Because everything was going to be free. Today, do you know the amount of money parents are paying under the guise of PTA fees, uh, uh, PTA dues? Um, uh, pay, parents are even paying for beds, furniture. Huh? So that, don't just be deceived by that cliche free SHS. Go on the ground and see the reality. One district, one factory. Well, I entreat you to watch. A documentary currently being aired on Joy News titled uh, One District Some Factories, which is more or less a fact check of the claim of the president in his uh, uh, State of the Nation address that so far 106 factories have been completed. You haven't seen the Confucius Oh, factory. the media has since found out that most of the so called 106 completed factories are uncompleted, abandoned structures. For example, the one they claim to have built at Agogo, that plantain processing factory. The media has gone there with their cameras. It's proving to be totally false. There is nothing like that. Likewise, the so-called ginger processing factory they claim to have built at Ekrima Wabija. I can go on and on and on. Like I've told you, these are a group of scammers. Don't believe anything they tell you. Listen, before COVID, the economy was nothing to write home about. Our debt service amount had increased from 11 billion Ghana cities mm, to 37 billion Ghana cities in 2019. And that amount constituted 91% of our tax revenue. In other words, we were so broke before COVID that 91% of our entire tax revenue was being used for only one budget line item to service our debts. Why? Ah, if before COVID, this economy was so rosy, let me remind you of something. You recall that when COVID first struck, President Ekufuado went to parliament and announced a $100 million allocation for AIDS coronavirus alleviation program. You remember? Certainly. Do you know that the government was so broke at the time that it couldn't raise the $100 million? It couldn't raise $100 million. Come on, $100 million. It had to take the World Bank to bail us out. That is how broke we were. Again, let's even put this aside. Let's look at the windfall revenue this nation got when COVID struck, after COVID struck us, to manage the pandemic. You know, according to the Auditor General, we got 21.8 billion. But that is not all, because the Auditor General did not add the $1 billion facility, SDR facility we got from the IMF in 2021. He only accounted for the first $1 billion facility, uh, rapid credit facility from the IMF. So if you add the second $1 billion facility from the IMF under the SDR, and you add donations into the COVID trust fund, and so on, you come to a total of over 30 billion CDs revenue for the management of COVID. Look around you. Look at all the nations surrounding us. Tell me which of the nations had over 30 billion cities. The equivalent of about three to four billion dollars to so manage I mean, once you hear during 2020. If I can just land on this point. Once you are landing, because food was saved, 
free food, oh. electricity, <laughs> or other sort of tariffs for utilities were also reduced for the ordinary Ghanaian. What kind of free food are you and talking about? And then also health workers were given some relief. Look. Despite what the auditor did not say. The government that, says all, that all these were done. All that was a ruse by our leaders to cream off state resources. And the Auditor General, the Auditor General's report on COVID expenditure bears that out. COVID-19, even though it was a public health crisis that claimed many lives, became a corruption bonanza for the Akufu Adobawumia government. That is how cruel they are. How do you draw that? That money is meant for managing such a health crisis and for saving the lives of our people were misappropriated in, and in some cases looted by duty bearers. I'm not saying it. The Auditor General is saying so. But even before I give you evidence to buttress that, I was making the point that they had in excess of 30 billion to manage COVID. Yet, according to the Auditor General, they only spent about 12 billion on COVID-19. Meaning that they had in excess of 18 billion Ghana cities, which they did not spend on COVID. They claim to have spent it on budget support. The euphemism for their wastage. Roland, you, you, you understand me? Now, if COVID-19 gave this nation more than we needed to even manage its impact on our economy. In fact, 18 billion cities more than we needed. Then COVID-19 cannot reasonably be said to be the reason for our economic woes. Then what Let's is? be objective here. The problem has to do with the wastage and the corruption that this government has engaged in in the last six and a half years. That is the problem. Look, I was talking to you earlier about how they looted and misappropriated COVID funds. You spoke about food. Do you know that this government claims that during the three weeks of partial lockdown, not in the entire Ghana, but just in Kumase Kaswa and Accra, sections of Accra, if I can say so, they spent a whopping 12 million Ghana cities on hot meals. That is equivalent to 120 billion old Ghana cities on hot meals. And you know the kind of hot meals I'm talking about here. Kinky without fish, rice and some egg. Gary with sugar and so on. 120 billion old cities. And when the Auditor General asked them for receipts, they had none to show. They only had honor certificates. When the companies which supply these hot meals are registered companies, Registered with the GRA, ready, some registered under school feeding, and according to the Auditor General, should have given government receipts for those expenditures. You know why they had no receipts to show for? Because they squandered the money. They spent another 5.6 million cities, equivalent to 56 billion old cities on what meals. As for that expenditure, there were no honor certificates or receipts to show for. You recall that they told us that they were giving us free water, okay, only to turn around one year after to, 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 to impose a draconian COVID levy on us, a tax we continue to pay to date. The amount of money they paid for that so-called free water was 37.4 million cities, equivalent to 370 billion OCDs. When the Auditor General was auditing this expenditure item and he requested for water bills buttressing these payments, government had nothing to show for. Can you believe that? In which country can this happen? COVID money, money meant for saving lives. Do you know that this government was so cruel that even medical equipment which were purchased with COVID funds were $250,000? received at the central medical source and dispatched to specific hospitals, never got to the hospitals. They sold the equipment as well. They gave a contract worth 1.4 million cities, that is some 14 billion old Ghana cities, to a company called Modern Securities Printing uh, 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 Limited. What was the contract for? To educate SHS students 
on COVID-19 safety protocols. Randy, uh, uh, Roland, what are the protocols? Wash your hand, use sanitizer, wear face mask, ensure social distancing. Something that teachers in these schools could have done for free. They spent 14 billion OCDs on that. And when the Auditor General checked, the contractor did not do the education, he didn't do the job, yet has been paid in full. Is this not naked TV? Masa, in Bawomia hometown, Nalirigu, they gave a contract for the construction of an isolation center worth $15 million. Paid an advance of $4.5 million to the contractor without taking any performance bond or any form of guarantee. The contractor took the money and never stepped at the site till date. And we have still not retrieved these monies. According to the Auditor General, over 543 million Ghana cities, that is some 5.4 trillion OCDs, was spent on COVID by this government outside the gift me system in breach of law. So COVID was only an avenue for them to milk the state coffers, to enrich themselves. When they blame all their woes on COVID, why? Is it because of COVID that we can't pay our debts? Is it because of COVID that today the lending rate in Ghana has increased from averagely 25% in 2016 to close to 40%, in some banks 45%. Master, tell me, how will businesses cope? How can you take a loan from a bank and be charged an interest rate of 40 to 45%? How will you survive this? Sami, the response from government consistently on some of these things are that these exogenous factors post covid especially the Russian-Ukraine war, has exacerbated the situation. That's why we find ourselves. Oh, I, I'm, indeed, I'm, I'm very happy. Indeed, indeed, the Attorney General had even the, the response directly to the Auditor General about why no, the no, publication no, let's was... Let's deal with... I'm, I'm asked for the uh, Attorney General. He obviously wanted to cover up and sweep under the carpets. You can't say that the, of the, the Attorney the, General. Oh, but if you are not um, somebody who supports corruption. Why will you pretend to take umbrage, okay, to the publication of an audit report? Ah, the Auditor General has performed his constitutional duties. He has conducted an audit. He has published his report. Those he has surcharged, those against, uh, I mean, uh, those who have been involved in expenditures which have been disallowed by the Auditor General, have a remedy under the law. They can go to the High Court to challenge that. Why is the, Auditor, uh, the Attorney General angry that the report has been published? He doesn't want Ghanaians to know how COVID funds were misappropriated and looted by this government. That is all. But you spoke about exogenous factors. Exogenous factors because that's a, that. a, a I have demonstrated that government I have, consistent. it's not about they repeating that lie over and over again. It's yeah. about what the facts say. It's about what the truth is. Look. Apart from the pre-COVID economy that I've, I've, I've explained to you with facts, incontrovertible facts, and apart from the unprecedented windfall revenue we had to manage COVID, which they have wasted, as has been revealed by the Auditor General, look at our neighbors. We all know that COVID was a pandemic. No, be so. It affected all the nations of the world. Yes, it did. Did COVID affect Ghana more than it did Côte d'Ivoire? Did COVID affect Ghana more than it did Benin? Did COVID affect Ghana more than it did Nigeria? Did COVID affect Ghana more than it did Burkina Faso? How come that none of these countries surrounding us, which I have mentioned to you, are recording debt defaults? How come that none of these countries are imposing cure financial haircuts on their citizens under the guise of debt restructuring? How come none of these countries are currently implementing a domestic debt exchange program? How come none of these countries have recorded inflation rates, okay, has recorded uh, uh, inflation rates of 52% like we are experiencing in Ghana? How come that none of these countries has um, 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 been downgraded to be low junk status and has been locked out of the international capital market. How come? Why Ghana alone? Huh? And as our national chairman said, borrowing or paraphrasing 
uh, Alaji Bagumia. How come that COVID-19 and the Russian-Ukrainian war jumped over all our neighbors, Burkina Faso, Benin, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, and only landed in Ghana to destroy our economy? These people are only making flimsy excuses for their failures. Why flimsy? That is what bad leaders do. Leaders who accept responsibility for nothing. They are not responsible for anything. So who caused the mess? You've been in office for six and a half years. You only want to take responsibility for the first three years. So the, 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 the remaining three years, who should take responsibility for that? Was Akuf Wadu and Bawumi are not drawing per diems, allowances, and salaries for that period? They have to take responsibility for their own failings. Now, so this has got nothing to do with any exogenous factors. But even before you ask your next question, look. The destruction of Ghana's economy by this reckless Akufu Adobawumia government permeates every sector of the economy. It's not just about um, um, the debt, the lending rate, the inflation rate, and all that. Today, look at the, the, the manufacturing sector. Hmm? Do you know that in 2016, the manufacturing sector grew by 7.9%? There was no 1D1F. But today, that the government claims to have done 1D1F, Funded by John Mohammed's Ezem Bank, the Ezem Bank John Mohammed established. The manufacturing sector is contracting. In fact, growth rate for the sector has declined from 7.9% in 2016 to 4.5% as we speak. Construction. In 2016, that sector grew by 8.4%. Under this government, who claims to have built more roads than all governments since the Fourth Republic? The construction sector has contracted and is now growing at a rate of 4.2%, from 8.4%. Agriculture sector grew at a rate of 2.7%. In 2016, you recall how the MPP made noise about this and lambasted us, called us names, were incompetent and all that. After spending billions on their much-touted planting for food and jobs program, Today, today, do you know the growth rate for the agri sector for 2022? 0.7%. Well, we have to go for a break. But I have this to say because uh, when you listen to the IMF, they say that the Russian-Ukraine war led to skyrocketing energy prices and high inflation in many Western countries. When, what is the date on this? This, this was published just in December 2020. Is Ghana a Western country? Now, they said, which has in turn led to imported inflation and as a result, increased the cost of living in several African countries. What do you so, say? So how come Cote d'Ivoire is not recording uh, uh, an inflation rate of 52%? It is true that a war obviously led to um, 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 inflation. Okay. So you are saying but it, it is the rate of inflation that matters. Yes, many countries are experiencing hardships. It is the rate of the hardship that matters. And that okay, is you know that the 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 uh the incra symbol that says ebi mm. uh -huh, That is it. So not all hardships are the same. An inflation rate of yes, 10% inflation rate is inflation, but it is not the same as 52% inflation rate. Unemployment rates of 5% is bad. But it is not the same as a 14% unemployment rate of this country as of 2021. When unemployment rate was 8.4% in 2016, today it is 8.4, 14%. Uh, uh, Do you know that in the last few months alone, because we have defaulted on our debt repayments, many major contractors who are working on major projects in this country, foreign-funded projects, have laid off over 5,000 workers? Do you know that? Do you know that contractor, the company working on the KGTR project, has laid off over 1,500 workers just a few weeks ago? Do you know that Rolida has laid off thousands of workers, Amandi, thousands of workers, Via Build, thousands of workers? Innocent Ghanaians are now paying for the recklessness of this government. And that is why General Mosquito said in his address that never again should we as a people allow ourselves to be tormented by a group of people who feel self-entitled to Ms. Gavin. Well, following this, we want to go for a break. When we come back, we want to ask Sami Jemfi, the communication officer for the NDC, well, after all the criticism of the Akufu led government, what really is the alternative, the solution they have to the 
problems the so-called point out plaguing the Ghana economy and blaming it on the Nanado-led government. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. I'm going to interview Zuzum right here in my house. Hey! Look up there. Why are you using inferior pen? It was a mistake. I know check you. Acrobat too. I'm going to knock you out. I know, sir. You deserve quality. Don't make mistakes. Stop! You did the right thing. When you are going to buy a paint, don't look left, don't look right. Go straight and grab the luxury acrylic paint. No be any paint, be paint. Oh. The luxury acrylic paint. Paint me champion. Wake up the champion in your child. Give them energy to go further. Let Milo with Active Go and the natural goodness of malt, milk, and cocoa helps wake up the champion in your child. Milo. This advert is FDA approved. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful M Punch Ha! Just an amyan Cassami Prod, and let's say problems room. It's not my own way, dear mammy. Papa, patches and any answer, and Ketua. I'm quite pointing on my shame, and Mojam, no baby, be an awesome woman, do mammy do me fine, and then my own crammy, you know, who for one, I'm quite more. Eba, and everything yourself. Be mammy, no, I do, and the whole wound to me, Nancy. And then you call end point, or mamma, and then the white dear, what's me, I'm sorry, and Nancy. That's end point for you. Of our brother, hello. Hey, what's your what? Okay, a free bra would be end point, what does it? I'm a choir, you know. I just say my name quickly, and pass on my name and the Medina Sabema. Now, when we feel for the one in the Jarasa, you had everything. I have secret. M Punch is my secret. M Punch from your party clinic. I'm free. It's FDA approved. Are you ready for an unforgettable adventure? TV3 and 3FM presents the Amedrofe and Shy Expedition. Join us on an epic journey as we wrap up Ghana Month to the stunning Shy Reserve and breathtaking Mount Gemi at Amedrofe. Explore the rugged terrain and soaking the natural beauty that surrounds you. From lush forests to stunning waterfalls, we kickstart the experience at the Shy Reserve Safari Drive. Visit the historic caves and museums. Have breakfast and then we head to a major fair where we hike to the summit of Mount Gemi, trek to Ota Falls, Canopy Walk. This one day roller coaster package comes with transportation, breakfast, snacks, drinks, lunch, t-shirts, DJs on rotation and more. So what are you waiting for? Join TV3 and 3FM on this incredible escapade to the Shy Reserve and Mount Gemi at a major fair and create memories that will last a lifetime. Book your seat now. Call 0541-159715 or 0243-852-001 In partnership with Forestry Commission This generation, you can never find true love Sir? If you don't get money, you don't go get love Love is spiritual God so loves the world that it gave Jesus Christ came to lay his life Boss. How much be your salary? How much be your salary? Your girlfriend in my gallery. She in my gallery. Stop on a gallery. Stop on a gallery. Baby girl, I'm here for you. She's good. From the Lord is good to she's good. And then I also like the fact that she's jealous. <laughs> She be full package. I do. As in, she be correct. Allah. She sets. Allah. She, she be take away. Mm, it's in. okay. Date Rush shows every Sunday at 8 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. Date Rush is sponsored by Rush Energy Drink, Airtel Tigo, Sense Body Spray, Daffy's Health and Beauty, Pepsodent Herbal, Geisha. Obwasi bitters. Remy spices. Give us herbal mixture. Carnival strawberry. Forever clear. Acne control range and multi fruit set. Deluxe acrylic paint. Star. Dano milk. It is a complex issue causing significant agitation in marriages. I didn't believe it in the first place. The result came in. They said the problem was from me. 
men and women are going places, following all kinds of instructions just to get solutions to their fertility issues. I'm doing God's work because I think he said we should fill the earth and I fill it for people with the less, and people who don't have children and stuff. Be it sperm donation, egg preservation, fibroids or even dealing with low sperm count, the experts say there is hope. We have to go the extra step of physically injecting the sperm into the egg in order for it to be able to fertilize. Emmanuel Samani in TV3's latest feature, Longing for Children, takes us on a journey to explore what is becoming a fertility crisis in Ghana and the possible solutions. Longing for Children airs on Wednesday, 22nd March at 9 p.m. on TV3 and across all social media platforms. It's the road to VGMA 24. All the buzz, all the juice, the info about the biggest night of music in Ghana, the 24th Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, right here on TV3. This and every Saturday from 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Listen, brace yourself, leg up. Urban Lifestyle Radio Station. Welcome back. We still have here with us the communication officer of the opposition NDC, Sami Jenfi, who is also a legal practitioner. Now, heading to 2024, which is just a year and some few months down the lane, is the bigger public opinion and conversation about the concerns uh, on the side of the governing MPP that you seem to be criticizing the Kufado led government, but preferring no solutions. What's your response to that? Well, <laughs> I get very surprised when I hear our friends in the MPP speak like that and ask for alternatives or say that we have no alternative policies. Well, it's either they have a listening problem or they, they, they simply cannot understand simple language or simple issues. <laughs> Roland, were you not in this country when we held the Ghana uh, at, at Crossroads lecture addressed by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama at Kempiski and outlined 11 alternative policy, policy uh, proposals for the consideration of this government? At that event, do you recall that President Mahama was the first person in this country to call on government to go to the IMF as early as possible to salvage what was left of this economy? If they had listened to that wise counsel at the time and gone to the IMF early enough, we would not have ended up there later on a stretcher. Maybe we could have taken advantage of the DSSI program of the IMF, the debt suspension program of the IMF, which was in force at the time. We waited for the policy to lapse. And that is why not too long ago, the director of the World Bank came out to say that he was surprised that Ghana did not take advantage of the DSSI. They were all shocked. President Mahama saw this far ahead. There would not have been any of these cruel financial haircuts being imposed today on pensioners and other citizens and people who have lent to the government. So it isn't that we are not giving them alternative policy proposals. It is, be it is simply because this government is a belligerent, intransigent government. They don't listen to advice. They behave as if they are the paragon of all knowledge, all wisdom. So when, when they were borrowing recklessly, we told them that, hey, you are on a dangerous path. You don't borrow for consumption. I don't go to them. Honorable Atoforsin told them. His Excellency Muhammad told them. The Gen General Mosquito told them. We all told them. You borrow for investments. You borrow for self-financing investments that can pay for the loans tomorrow. Today you are doing a domestic debt exchange, which is basically a deferment of our debt obligations. Where will we get the money from? Six year, in six years' time, three years' time, five years' time, to pay for those debts. You are only shifting the responsibility to the next government. 
Roland, just in case they have not been listening to our alternative proposals, let me give you just five. Give five me. basic ones, okay, that they can do to improve our economic conditions. Because Ghana needs to work. This is not about partisanship. This is about us all. It's about our only country. And any patriotic Ghanaian must be interested in the solution of the problem. Only if the government will listen. The first alternative proposal we have for them is that, Mr. President, cut down on waste. The waste in your government is simply too much. You didn't hear what the finance minister said in the budget. It's not, about, it's not about what he says. It's about what... No use of four-wheel drives a, in about, inner it, city. No, no, it's about what you do that matters, not what you say. Actions speak louder than words. Okay? They told us two years ago that they were going to cut expenditure. They announced all these things. They keep on rehashing them. You, you, you are yet seeing the vice president in buses instead of being in their four-wheel drives. Yet we see an increase drive. in waste. Why? How come that in the midst of these economic difficulties... Okay, the most excruciating hardships we have experienced as a people in living memory. Government is wasting the, the, the public purse on a needless so-called national cathedral. Is that necessary now? Do we need a national cathedral now? You don't even have money to buy common vaccines to protect innocent, defenseless babies. Babies. You can't give them vaccines. You lie that... It is because of a global shortage of vaccines. That is why you cannot procure the uh, vaccines for the cis childhood killer diseases. Only for us to find out that a, a country like Nigeria with a population of close to 300 million, because of forward planning of their leaders, procured in excess of what they needed as a country and even had extra to spare. Today they've lent us vaccines to use for a period of two weeks. What an embarrassment that we can't even buy vaccines to protect our babies. We can't buy test books for basic school children more than three years after we introduced a new syllabus. We owe contractors over 12 billion cities and your priority is a so-called national cathedral in this time, which you have spent in excess of 350 million cities on. 350 million cities. In OCD's equivalent, you're talking about 3.5 trillion. Listen to me carefully. On this cathedral, and what do they have to show for? Not even a, a, a completed foundation level, you know. What they have to show for is the biggest hole, the biggest pit, the most expensive pit in the whole world, worth $58 million dollars. 350 million cities. They took our, our monies, 28 million cities equivalent to 280 billion, and gave it to Kerry Summers and his group. For what? To coordinate, not to build, to coordinate a biblical museum and a garden. Coordinate. They took another 113 million cities equivalent to 1.1 trillion, gave it to David Ajaye, a gay advocate to draw the national cathedral, just to draw, draw architecture drawing of a building, 1.3 trillion. Why? Why? Why this waste? Right? So you cannot continue to waste the public purse like this and say that, oh, I know we are in crisis. Yet you are not behaving like a parent whose family is in crisis. In only nine months last year, according to their own documents supplied to parliament by the chief of staff. Do you know that this government spent a whopping 4.8 million cities on one cabinet meeting outside Accra? They call it cabinet retreat. One meeting cost the nation a colossal 48 billion cities. It is profess solutions to the difficulties. Ah, the so one meeting should cost us 4.8 million cities? What did they use the money for? To drink champagne or what? Whiskey? or I asked a question about the solution. No, no, hold on, hold on. Yeah, the solution is, first of all, to cut the waste. And I'm showing you the waste. And what we can get if we decide to reset our priorities. If we, we decide to stop some of these wasteful expenditures. Within that same period, that is January to September 2022, the president alone spent 59 million cities. 
equivalent to 590 billion OCDs on something he calls operational enhancement. Whatever that means. That's the office of the president. Operational enhancement. Office, what, what, what is that? The anymore? president encompasses a lot no, of... Sir, don't justify their recklessness. Don't. They spent another 51 million CDs, equivalent to 510 billion, on fuel bills, common fuel. And at the time, they told us that they had placed a moratorium on the purchase of new vehicles. Between January to September last year, they spent 6.5 million CDs, equivalent to 650 billion OCDs on the procurement of new vehicles. Spent 7 million CDs on data and network charges, data for browsing and network charges. 70 billion OCDs. Are they? The Independence Day celebration they had last year at Cape Coast. They spent more than 10 million CDs on it. Over 100 billion in one day. So if they cut down on the waste and reset their priorities, cut down on the bloated size of their government, cut down on the many appointees at the presidency, we can make huge savings for other meaningful projects. Why should we be maintaining superfluous portfolios like overseer of National Cathedral, manager of, of presidential staffer in charge of the management of church relations, diaspora church matters. They even have a presidential, a technical advisor to the presidential advisor on media. What be that? A presidential staffer in charge of NAPCO. Meanwhile, the NAPCO has collapsed. You owe the beneficiaries nine months you are not even paying. So let's stop the waste. That is the first alternative. Secondly, let's eschew corruption and punish those who engage in corruption. Look at the way you have wasted COVID funds. Okay? And when we are, even before Parliament, we investigate that. You, you clear those who have been indicted and you confer on them. People like Okwajima Menu, who has been indicted by Parliament for procurement breaches in the procurement of Sputnik V vaccines and for the inflation of the price of the vaccines he claimed to have procured, and so on. You confer national honors on their corruption as well. Number two, we, have we, we, we are saying implement the recommendations of the Constitutional Review Commission by scrapping S. Gracia. We don't need it. Again, revisit Operation Feed Yourself. Let us grow what we eat and cut down on the import bill. President Mahama has said that. Again, we are saying that revamp certain factories that the elsewhere government commenced, which can go a long way to create jobs and to cut down on the import bill. We've spoken about revamping the share factory we started at Bupe, which they have abandoned to rot. I mean, operationalize the Commander Sugar Processing Factory to cut down our sugar import bill. The Juice Sacks uh, factory project we commenced, but actually, uh, did not start the actual construction. We are saying they should take it up to reduce our importation on juice stacks. We've spoken about the need for them to revamp tar so that we can process our own oil. We drill oil from 10 Sankofa fields. We have our shares of that oil. Before we left office, we had about 2 million barrels of our own oil from 10 Sankofa sitting in the tanks of tar. Why can't we get tar to work so that we can reduce the over $400 million dollars BDCs have to spend on oil imports every quarter. These and many more are the policy alternatives we have given them. And if they will listen, I believe that mm. Ghana will be a better place for all of us. Well, thank you for passing through the studios this morning. Sami Jemfi is the communications officer of the NDC coming um, to further uh, explain issues, especially the position of the opposition NDC on Ghana's State of the Nation address because it received extreme criticism from the governing New Patriotic Party as well as government in general that, well, the blatant falsehoods, they were laced with propaganda, unsubstantiated allegations, and unprovoked attacks. They have cited one example of that, not even one. We're taking a break. When we <laughs> come back, we'll have more conversations right here on TV3 New Day. Stay with us.